Hey, what's up guys? Arava here and welcome back to another episode of my F123 My Team Career Mode. This is episode number 9 today for the Canadian Grand Prix in Season 1. If you guys did miss the previous episode at the Spanish Grand Prix, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one. We've had a really decent run of form ever since that, uh, you know, very strange red flag incident at the Miami Grand Prix. Imola, a very solid race, executing our race strategy to near perfection in terms terms of versus our rivals, the Monaco Grand Prix, extraordinary, and we got our very first podium on this game in very different circumstances with the safety guard obviously helping us out a lot, I will admit, and then the Spanish Grand Prix was just a triumph of that strategy of being on the soft compound attire and the demise of the likes of Perez and Norris, who both suffered car issues or a front wing damage in the case of the Red Bull uh, of Sergio Perez, so we ended up getting a very very solid P6 position. It could have and really should have maybe been P8, but you've got to take what you can get, basically, and when the rub of the green comes our way, you know that we have to be in the right position to get that, and we did that. You know, we had some really great pace on the soft compound to chase after, overtake the cars we had to, to then be in that position to then try and defend on some very worn soft tyres to finish across the line like that, and that fills me with a lot of confidence now going into the Canadian Grand Prix, but first and foremost, we have a shock driver retirement Retirement announcement so early on in season one only. Fernando Alonso, of all people, is going to be retiring from the sport again. And I, I found this so, so odd. Nine episodes in into season one, we've got any sort of retirement announcement. It doesn't matter who it was. It's quite early to announce a retirement from the first season of my team career mode, let alone Fernando Alonso. Like, you know, I know Aston Martin haven't had the exact same amazing performance that they have in real life, you know, to get some consistent podiums, but you'd like to think Aston can build something from the foundations where they are in this career mode save, you know, in, in season two, etc. on. So, yeah, very shocking. So, Fernando Alonso, does he know something we don't? Are there major upgrades in Aston Martin's pipeline on the way and he thinks he can challenge for the title as a dark horse and then dip out and retire once he's got that elusive extra world championship? Championship. I don't know, but I found that a real shock, to be honest. I, I would have thought, okay, maybe like a Valtteri Bottas would have retired. But even the announcement being this early was a bit of a shock. But we now have a very exciting development in terms of our car as we have that engine power upgrade come in. Remember, it failed in last episode. We had to repurchase it. It should have come in for the Spanish Grand Prix. But it's coming in at a very interesting time because this officially means we have the best engine on the grid. We have the most powerful engine on the grid. That is absolutely insane. Only nine episodes in, in season one of this career mode, showing that we've made some great great progress, some decisions have been made, clearly maybe at the detriment to our chassis, because our chassis has actually fallen behind a little bit compared to our rivals of Alpine and McLaren, but remember, the Honda power unit started off as one of the best power units on, on this grid, and we've gone ahead, made three upgrades on the power side, I think one upgrade it was on the fuel efficiency, potentially I think it was, I can't remember exactly, but yeah, either way, we've got the best engine on the grid, that is incredible, and it's is going to be very useful at the Canadian Grand Prix. That long back straight, we are going to abuse this new engine power that we've got. And at the same time, we've got our major weight reduction upgrade that is coming onto the car. So not only do we have now the best engine on the grid, we have a much lighter car than we did last episode. Those combined are going to give us a great acceleration exit out of that hairpin and then absolute stonks down that back straight. This is going to be a good weekend, mark my words, because you guys know, if you've watched my channel for a while, I love Montreal. It's one of my best circuits. I love racing around here, and we always seem to go well around here. And now with this situation, it's looking good. Now we move on to talking about some money and upgrading our HQ facilities because we do have enough cash now to potentially buy another upgrade. I was checking for how much money we may need to re-sign our teammate Iwasa at the contract period halfway through the season. I'm going to risk it and we're going to spend the 2.25 million on the fabrication on the aero side. So that's going to mean we can build two simultaneous upgrades on the aero once that upgrade comes in for the HQ facility. We'll worry about the money 
money we need to earn to re-sign our teammate later down the line when we get to the contract period. But look at this R&D chart now. So you know that massive leap McLaren made at Spain? We've matched it now going into Canada, which is really great to see. We're back on level terms on paper with McLaren. You can see Aston Martin have made an even bigger upgrade to nearly match Mercedes. So like I said before, linking back to what I, uh, I said earlier about Alonso, does he know something we don't? Is he announcing his retirement because he thinks Aston can continue this trajectory of improvement in the next couple of episodes? And that he can somehow make his way into the title fight and try and win the title and then dip and retire. Just like Rosberg did, obviously, those years ago. I don't know, but it's a, a very peculiar one. But yeah, some big movers in Aston Martin and ourselves for this race weekend. And that's in the, in the backdrop and landscape of Scuderia Ferrari still leading the championship. The drivers and the constructors with Carlos Sainz spearheading them. And Red Bull still not making the most of the fact they've been the quickest car outright all season and yet they don't lead either championship it's pretty surprising and just showing that this year i think more than other year other games and other years that the ai are making that big difference and operationally they need to be better and you know having a good car doesn't just equal the performance you need to be there at the right time you need to not slip up bit of luck here and there as well and of course that's how we've been able to get ahead of McLaren and Alpine so far you know I'm not going to deny we have got lucky in a couple of these races but at the same time you know you can always equally get some bad luck so we need to be wary and just you know this is why you need to make the most of these situations because you don't know my engine could you know we've got the best engine on this on this grid now it could just blow up in this race coming up and then we'd be talking about a very different situation so we're going to have to try and keep a level head about it and keep ourselves realistic that at some point I think McLaren and Alpine will come back at us even Haas might to be honest so let's kind of revel in the good times right now and score as many points and bank as many points as we can and with that we're into Q2 now as we've been talking about all of that into this race weekend it was a formality for us around here and now looking to try and get into Q3 for another time obviously last time out Spain we didn't manage to do it with that huge mistake and then the floor damage we had in that second run around Catalonia we go fastest of all in Q2 at the moment which is ridiculous so I don't know how Ferrari looked that slow right now at the moment and I was feeling pretty confident we were P4 purple first sector purple last sector which is all about the engine power that last sector especially is just pure engine power and the lightweight chassis and I got too cocky I got way too confident and this is what I'm saying I, what happened there was I literally didn't follow my own advice I just talked about keeping my wits about us. I got way too cocky about, oh, I've smashed that. I'm through into Q3 and just one lap in Q2. And what happened? I got knocked out because everyone sped up, improved their lap times infinitely. And, uh, well, we now look very, very silly. Now, with all these upgrades, we only manage P12 on the grid. And tomorrow's race could be a wet one looking at the weather forecast so we have got some work to do to try and make amends for this really piss poor Saturday to be honest but Fernando Alonso tops Q2 after he announces his retirement I think there's something absolutely that he knows that we don't about Aston Martin's chances for the rest of this season it's going to be an interesting one but let's go to the grid we have some serious making up to do and I'm determined to because I think this part of this car has a lot a lot of pace in the tank We're back once again beside the St. Lawrence River here in Montreal for the Canadian Grand Prix. The event first moved to the variants of this track back in 1978, and it was won by none other than Gilles Villeneuve, the first Canadian to ever win his home race, and in whose honor the circuit would be renamed. It's a tricky circuit to tackle in wet conditions, with top speed still of critical importance down the long back straight. There are 2.7 miles and 14 corners overall on this circuit that in the dry can see average lap speeds of around 130 miles per hour. We'll be lucky to get anywhere near that today. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. A fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday and it's put him on pole and a very happy Carlos Sainz will start second. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Verstappen, Russell, Perez, Fernando Alonso, Norris, Gasly, Ocon, Sonoda, 
owner driver, Bottas. Stroll, Hulkenberg. Hamilton, Joe. Iwasa, Oscar Piastri. Albon, De Vries. Sargent, De Vries. And now it's time to head down to the track. And joining me again for the race today, Natalie Pinkham. Let's have a chat about Williams. What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within the team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that has definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. So it's going to be a wet affair to start off this Canadian Grand Prix, which is slightly concerning. The setup I've got is very much a dry setup, but I think most of us will have a dry setup because there is rain, but there's also forecast for it to move away from the circuit and to get drier later on. So it's just about surviving this first part of the race, kind of like we had at Miami. Let's hope, though, unlike Miami, we don't get a red flag that glitches and causes us to not get the position we actually finish the, the, the race in, um, and we can just have a smooth one and actually get a chance to show off that best engine in class on this grid because I know we're going to have pace down that back straight, especially with the DRS upgrade that we've got on the car, the lightweight chassis as well, with that major upgrade coming in. There's a lot of reason to believe that we can do a lot better than P11, a lot better than maybe we even did in the Spanish Grand Prix. But we first have to get through this very tough part of the race on intermediates down the order from where we should be after that pretty poor qualifying. Let's go to five red lights here in Montreal a Ferrari front row lockout lights out and away we go and it's a bit of a mediocre start initially there versus the cars around is a Bottas and Sonoda we're going to try and go down the inside of Yuki side by side and then try and dance the car round Esteban Ocon if we can big big tank slapper but all of us having a bit of a shaky rear end we're going to use a dose of battery to try and push ourselves round the outside Ocon gets the elbows out of course one of our rivals so far from this season with the Alpine team but we do get ahead and find ourselves in the sandwich now with Gasly up the road but we've lost a bit of time now 1.4 to be exact with all that fighting Ocon really did not want to give up that, that position but we've got it and now we need to use this clean air ahead of us to try and close up to that top pack tail ended by Pierre Gasly led by Leclerc it's still a 1-2 for Ferrari Verstappen in third place so the Mercedes cars clearly lacking a little bit, a bit of pace here at Montreal compared to how they did around Catalonia as by the end of lap two we have closed up to Gasly we've dropped Doc on and the car is feeling good it's a little bit nervous on the rear end but of course you expect that in these conditions so just have to keep our wits about us and not get too overconfident like you can do in the dry now with the new handling model and just try and stay the course because at some point I'll get the run on Gasly and that run may just be now on lap three on towards lap four down the back straight no DRS in these conditions just pure slipstream and a lot of ERS usage Gasly blocks us off on the inside we go to the outside we break early cut in tight Gasly's all over the shop and we switch it from right to left it was a kind of a, almost like a choreographed dance between myself and Gasly as he slid into the corner went left went right I went right then left and we got up into P8 that was pretty damn satisfying because we were probably inches away from him basically spinning into us and we managed just to time that to perfection to get up into P8 and then go try and chase after Norris if we can and there's an issue for Leclerc again for the second race in a row Leclerc is going to suffer an engine failure from first place in the race unbelievable stuff Leclerc is having an equally torrid time in the game as he is in real life Sainz takes the lead of the race and that's going to bring out a virtual safety guard but wow Leclerc they've really nailed on this bad luck for him in season one I must say two engine failures in a row from Spain to Canada obviously had a third one at Miami he's had a few little you know qu you know four, four balls here and there where you know science has got ahead of him and that's why science is the clear number one driver you got to say in Ferrari right now leading the drivers championship um, so yeah dismal day for him uh, probably even a little bit worse for Logan Sargent who's 21 seconds back in last place somehow as we now go on from the virtual safety car it's 
green flag racing as we slide into the hairpin and try and get some grip back into these intermediates after going a bit slow under the delta time and we've got 1.9 seconds to Norris to try and bridge in the next couple of laps but Carlos Sainz leads the way under pressure from the staff and both of them go on ahead into the pits everyone is in to the pits in fact and I wonder are they going to put on the dry tyres I said it was on the way and even though it looks very wet apparently it's time for dry so we come in as well we see everyone coming in ahead of us so we're in and we're going to strap on the set of medium tyres just like everyone else and unlike in Miami we don't get caught out it's a little bit unrealistic but at this stage this is what dry a dry track looks like apparently on F123 is our pit stop is amazing and we jump Norris great job from the pit crew Great job, guys. We're up into P6 now. We've got ahead of Lando. That makes up for some of the pit stop errors we've had so far this season. I remember Jeddah, where we lost a lot of time with the rear tyre not going on properly. But look at the grip we've got on these dries in a track that looks this damp. It, it's just so disconcerting. And now we've got Norris going round our outside because I'm actually not going that quick right now on this outlap. I don't know whether it's the track's a bit damp and the AI are just perfect at finding the grip on these dry tyres. Or maybe my mind is playing a few little tricks on me because it looks so wet and I'm just not going as quick as I could be going. Either way though, Norris flies by with DRS, which has been activated and we have a huge lockup and almost clout the sausage curb on the inside of the final chicane. And that's going to now allow Gasly to come through on the inside. We've got Perez behind us, who we also jumped in the pit stops. Gasly, oh, he's got it all crossed up. Gasly, for the second time, slides in the brake zone. And he's gone straight on. That was unbelievable. What an AI mistake to make there. That was crazy. Gasly, fully off the road. And the safety car is now out because of Gasly being in a very unsafe position. But... I was really struggling on that outlap, so thank God the safety cars come out. This is going to give us much needed time just to calm things down in the cockpit, recompose a bit. But yeah, I didn't notice in the pit stop, we not only jumped Lando, we actually jumped Perez and Fernando Alonso because both of them were ahead of us before the pit stop. So we actually jumped three people in one pit stop alone. Obviously, we lost the place to Lando, but we're still now up in P5. This is the real pecking order after that pit stop because so many people got stuck in the pit lane and obviously our pit box is at the end of the pit lane so we gain quite a fair bit as now we look to try and gain back the position on Norris we get an illegal overtake even though we're past turn one whilst making the overtake I think the uh the flag ruling is a bit broken so far on F123 I noticed it at Miami the yellow flag it, the, the ruling is instigated for far too long into the corner after because officially you're allowed to overtake once you cross the start finish line but it doesn't matter I the way we still finished the move off on Norris because we let him by and then just re-overtook him straight away at the next chicane and now we're all of a sudden in a top four position things are looking so much better than how they started here in Montreal because seven whole laps later we're still in P4 we're nearly two seconds ahead of the next car which is Sergio Perez now he finally got past Lando Norris but he's really struggling in this last phase of this season in that Red Bull and we're keeping pace with Russell I'm on purpose making sure we just stay in his DRS just to drag us along because we're slowly maybe gaining both of us on the Stappen and Carlos Sainz for P1 and P2 and Russell he has the better pace in the corners but I have all the pace in the world on that back straight so that's just allowing us to pull through and I'm struggling on the tyres a little bit you can see these moments of oversteer on that lap two laps later on lap 19 we're gonna get another snap of oversteer just right there so we need the DRS of Russell to pull us along but now a second safety car is out and that is gonna bunch us all up so now we don't even need Russell to close us up to the top two. We're all going to close up and we might even pit under this now because it's definitely time nearly. Yeah, our pit stop window was lap 21. So we're two laps before that. So we definitely should pit now and get a free pit stop. Everyone else will as, as well, by the way, anyway. But this is why the safety car is out for the second time in this race. It's our teammate, Iwasa. We haven't seen too much of him this season, but it's a bit unfortunate this is how we're seeing him in this race. But uh, he goes for the move on the Alpha Tower. He gets it really crossed up, locks the rear, 
and smashes into the wall of champions here at Montreal. And the debris on the uh, entry is probably why there is going to be a full second safety guard. But yeah, our, lap, our, our pit stop window was lap 21 anyway. So we may as well pit under this safety car, get the free pit stop. Everyone's going to do the same, it looks like. But I'm thinking lap 19, we've got, you know, 15 laps left, minus two for the safety car. Why don't we risk it and go on softs? You know, it worked really well for us at Spain. And with 13 laps of this race, when the safety car comes in, I think we could get to the end just fine on softs. And another great pit stop. That's twice now we've jumped someone in the pit stops. Great work. The pit crew are absolutely on it today. We've jumped Russell. And now we're in third place under the safety car on soft tyres. And the cars ahead of us are on mediums. And we saw a Monaco. We saw it Spain. How big of a difference a different compound can make in terms of going that much quicker. And we're going on to the green flags on lap 21. I think we can get to the end just fine on these soft tyres. And we've got the best engine on the grid. I think we're about to have some fun. Maybe immediately as Verstappen is slow off the final corner. We get a legal overtake. He comes back and as Verstappen squeezes us nearly off circuit. Gets the elbows out. Maybe no love lost after the crash we had at Monaco together where he rear-ended me. But we're going to try our best to get to the inside. Verstappen will stay ahead. We're going to swap it back. Verstappen struggling to light up these mediums. And these softs are just so much quicker quicker on this game the soft compound versus medium or medium versus hard it just makes such a difference and so we're able to out traction him round the outside to get up into p2 and the thing is in a straight line i'm the quicker car in the corners fair enough he's got a lot more downforce a much better chassis but out in the straights it's just all us We've got the power, we've got the best engine, and he can't do anything about it. As long as we get a better exit, which we are going to with the soft tyres. I mean, look at it. Oh, no, another safety car. Another safety car. I was going to say we pulled one second on him already, just in one corner in a straight. That's how good our engine is. But we've got another safety car, a third safety car in one race here. And it's for Albon. He was the hero one of the heroes in the real-life Canadian Grand Prix. Unfortunately, in the, in the game here, he's broken his front wing. But the F1 gods, they're looking down upon us. I don't know about you, but I am getting a little bit of a funny feeling. We could try and win this race. We have to go for it. We're now in second. First place is right there. And this safety car is going to allow us to try and attack Carlos Sainz for the race win. If it wasn't for this safety car, he was gone. He was down the road. Maybe I could have caught him, but maybe not. But now I have a real chance of having a go at the Ferrari and going toe-to-toe -to -toe for the best position here in the race. P1 in Montreal. Let's try it. It's not the best entry and exit, I must admit, through the chicane. But look at the speed we're gaining with the RS and the engine power. We're through on the inside. Sainz comes back. Sainz takes us fully off circuit. It, all four wheels out the white line for us as Sainz gets the elbow and does not want to give up first place. My word, the AI this year, they defend very hard sometimes. When they want to, they defend very hard. That was probably just about borderline from Carlos Sainz there. That was some like Verstappen style defending from Sainz's AI. But, you know, we'll, we'll, whatever. We'll, we'll get on with it and we'll continue to try and chase after him. As long as we stay within DRS, I think we have a chance still because these softs are still the better tyre to be on. Although Verstappen is looking pretty ominous now. I think he's got other ideas as he goes to the inside. We give him a bit of a squeeze, but ultimately he's got to the apex first. But we just go round the outside. Power on, ERS on, and then just watch that time climb up. This, this engine is ridiculous. We just gained three tenths in the traction zone with the soft compound there and the engine power. This, I've unlocked a cheat code here with this best engine and going on a softer compound. It's just awesome. I'm sure this will come back to bite me literally next episode when we have to have a car that actually has some downforce. I'm sure of it. But right now, this car is working around Montreal and we're reeling in Carlos Sainz. He was four tenths ahead of us. We go to the inside. He blocks it off. We go to the outside and it's going to be a copycat move to the one we made on Gasly earlier for the race lead. 
We already practiced that move on Gasly, little did I know. And we just executed it again on the Ferrari this time. And we lead the Canadian Grand Prix. Can you believe it? But there's still seven laps to go. And now there is a spanner in the works. Read that from our engineer on the bottom there on the subtitles. We have lost a gear. Our gearbox is so warm. The rest of the engine's fine, but our gearbox is really warm. That's why the icon is brick orange right now on the bottom right of the heads-up display there. And we've lost fourth gear, you may notice. So we're going from fifth gear straight to third gear, which really unsettles the car mid-corner and really slows up momentum when you go from fifth to third because you want to go for fourth and carry the speed, but you lose speed by going down a second gear and skipping that gear. And that's a real problem in these slower corners where fourth gear is used quite a lot around Canada and so science now is right up our chuff we've got Verstappen there as well Russell Perez even so we need to watch out so although we've got into first place maybe now we've got a bit of bad luck coming our way with this gearbox issue as science powers past us with DRS it's a real struggle every corner you can see I'm just not getting the entry I want because the car is awkwardly bogging down as it skips the second gear to third gear as uh, we now try and climb up and it even hurts acceleration because you just don't you lose a bit of the acceleration because you go to fifth gear which is lower revs but it won't matter we're close enough to science here apologies for a slight bit of frame rate here annoyingly but we're gonna try and overtake science once again on the outside get to the apex first this time and we don't even need to wait for him to make a mistake. Science makes his own mistake being pinched into the inside. And now Verstappen will try and get up into second place as he looks to try his chance and luck at getting first place back off me. But, I mean, that sentence alone is unreal. The fact we're fighting the likes of Verstappen, Science for the race win here at Canada. It's glorious. Our engine is working well. The gearbox is a little bit battered, but we're trying our best. Lap 31, Verstappen comes to the inside. We squeeze him to the apex. We ultimately leave him room, though, because we just get the better run on the softs on the outside line. We use the extra track width to accelerate off the line well, and then we try and break the toe. Use a lot of ERS as we're in single digits now. As we look behind us, and it's a very scary story with Verstappen coming at us at a rate of knots. It's a very slow final chicane. We've got fourth gear back, but it won't matter. Verstappen's got the exit. He's got DRS, and he's coming through for P1, and he's got it into turn one's apex. He slides through. We try and go around the outside. We nearly bang tyres, but Max Verstappen has got into first place. We've lost the lead in the last three laps of this race. Can we do anything to get it back? Verstappen is so slow into that chicane. What's going on with that with him? We got a much better entry and exit there, and then again to this next left-hander. He's not going to be too great off the corner. He gets a bit unsettled on the curb. All doesn't seem too great for Verstappen. He's overtaken us, but we've got DRS now in the second sector. We're going to pull back some time, take it easy onto the racing line just keep as close as we can to that rear end we get a little bit caught on the curb and a bit of oversteer kicks in and now Sergio Perez may have a little look look at the move going on for Russell Russell with the double dive bomb to overtake Sainz and try and get Sergio Perez as Sainz now is all of a sudden down to P5 the championship leader has had a nightmare of a final couple of laps as we now gain on Verstappen and he's got nothing to defend with we power pass with DRS get to the apex first and once again we are just loving the straight line speed that we've got here and it's working for us Verstappen there I was so worried oh god he's overtaken us uh, that might be it but no we keep it up with him in the corners and then on the straight he could be six tenths down the road and with enough ERS and DRS we'll catch him, we'll overtake him we will be there, you know if he wants to overtake us at turn one we'll be there, he wants to overtake us the hairpin we'll be there, okay he wants to not even give us DRS we'll be there, well, the engine is good enough and we can do this and we're on the last half of the Grand Prix and he's behind us, the tyres are now screaming out a little bit as they're getting a bit wobbly and you can see I'm not that great and fast through these corners but it doesn't matter as long as we defend at the right times versus Max 
we can win this race. We fought too hard now not to win this one now. We need to, we need to see this home. But Verstappen is too tense behind us with DRS. He comes through round the outside. We have to stay defensive to the inside. We give him enough room to work with. Big, big tank slapper of Oversteer as we are desperate to get out of the corner quicker than him. And we are going to remain in first place. Verstappen doesn't get the best exit into that hairpin. And he remains in second place. And off the exit of the hairpin, we're just able to gap the car a little bit with the acceleration, the engine power, and the tyre grip that the softs is still giving us. And we come down the main straight. Verstappen will gain, but he won't be close enough as we come through the final two corners. And we're going to come through to win our very first race in my team career mode on F1 23. Verstappen pushes us across the line, but it's no use. He gets so close, but so far. And we are winners in Formula One. We've won the Canadian Grand Prix. Come on. Oh, fantastic drive. That's just fantastic. Amazing. You deserve that race win. Well done, mate. That's it for another magnificent Canadian Grand Prix. And they've hung on to take a sublime victory here today. So, Natalie, what do you think helped them deliver this result? Back in 2022, the new regulations came in with a promise. A promise of more wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing. That's exactly what we got today. And that has been the trend ever since their inception. Long may it continue. A show-stopping performance from the three drivers approaching the podium right now. It's been an interesting Grand Prix, that's for sure. Slipping our way onto the podium in comedic fashion. It's going to be a race win to remember. We win in Montreal and remind ourselves why we love this place so much. It's happy hunting grounds. And my word, this car was unbelievable today. Having the best engine on the grid... Yeah, very, very useful having that engine power and also that lightweight major chassis upgrade that we had as well with the soft compound combo. Again, we did get lucky with the three safety cars. All three of them helped us out inadvertently on the way to this win. But you need that kind of luck sometimes to win a Grand Prix, um, you know, especially as an underdog, as a midfield team. You know, you, you've seen it in the past. Pierre Gasly, Esteban Ocon, it, it, it just happens. You need a bit of luck to get that race win as a midfield team. And we've done it today. What a day that is for us. 70 points on the board to 37 for McLaren and Alpine. It means that, you know, even if we do hit bottlenecks, which I do think we will now with the HQ facilities, with the upgrades we've got available left, it doesn't matter. McLaren and Alpine can outscore us for plenty of races now. We've got that cushion just to help us out to maintain this P5 in the constructors all the way to the end of the season, I hope. But, you know, there's going to be plenty of fighting to go and hopefully we can still continue to improve the car. But, um... What? What an episode. What a race at Montreal. And what a race win that was. In a really fun way. We had some really fun racing out there. So guys, if you did enjoy it, be sure to hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.